Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of Mr. H's Hot Pot. You join me today, sat in the old jalopy, about to embark on a bit of an adventure. As we're off to Blackpool today, Hot Potters, we're going to the seaside. Now, the reason for that is that, as many of you know out there, Mr. H has a very keen interest in street furniture. Things like telephone boxes, post boxes, and all that kind of good stuff. I've featured many of these items on my channel throughout the years, and I always try and find... The rarer items. One such rare item is the Edward VIII post box. There's not many of these throughout the UK, simply because Edward VIII didn't sit on the throne for all that long. The reason for that we'll learn further on in this video. But I did spot an uber rare Edward VIII post box the other day when I was in Blackpool with Mrs H and little Toby James. We'd been to Blackpool Zoo and as we was driving home and passing Stanley Park, I noticed one out the corner of my eye. I always keep my eye open for these things. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today, Hot Potters. So, without further ado, I invite you to come and join me as I zip up the old M6 and we head off to Blackpool and take a look at a new Barreau Edward VIII post box and some of the curious history surrounding these post boxes. So join me now as we head off to Blackpool. And here we are folks, this is it. So what Potters, on the face of it, this post box which is located on West Park Drive, just outside the main driveway leading into Stanley Park here in Blackpool, looks like any other pillar type post box, but it isn't. And if you look closer at the Royal Cipher, which is the emblem just below the area showing the collection times, which I'll try and zoom in on for you now, You'll notice that it's a little different from the usual ones that you see on post boxes up and down the UK. And what makes this post box uber rare is that this is the Royal Cipher for King Edward VIII, who made history when he became the first and to date only English monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne after ruling for less than a year. Now Edward VIII, folks, is one of only two uncrowned kings of England whose reigns would end before their coronations could take place with Edward's coronation scheduled to take place on the 12th of May 1937 at Westminster Abbey in London, but it was never meant to be. Royal Mail, however, which was still at the time classed as a government department, had, like many other governmental departments, started to adopt the Edward VIII Royal Cipher from early 1936 when he became king, as they took it for granted that Edward's reign would last longer than 326 days. Therefore, postal vehicles, stamps and post boxes had started to be produced and installed in his name, which would become redundant virtually overnight later that year when he abdicated the throne. As King Edward VIII would create a constitutional crisis in late 1936, a major embarrassment for the British government when he announced his intention to marry his mistress, the American divorcee Wallace Simpson, pictured here with Edward, who he had been having a long-standing affair with while she was still married to her second husband and he was still a prince. To make matters worse for Edward, the Church of England, of which the reigning monarch is head of, did not at the time recognise marriages involving divorced people if their former spouse was still alive. Edward was therefore forced to choose between the throne and, as he put it, the woman that he loved. In the end, he chose Simpson and abdicated as King of the United Kingdom and the Dominions of the British Empire and Emperor of India on the 11th of December 1936 and married Simpson six months later as a private citizen whilst the crown and its titles passed over to his brother, George VI. History has also criticised the former king for his decision to tour Nazi Germany in 1937 and allow himself and his wife to be pictured alongside Adolf Hitler and other top Nazi officials at a time when tensions were rising between Britain and Germany that would eventually lead to World War II and have led many to suspect that Edward and Simpson were at the time Nazi sympathisers which for many is unforgivable, but we won't talk about that any further in this video. Now by the time of Edward's abdication, a number of post boxes bearing his royal cipher, like this one here, had already been produced and installed by Royal Mail across the country, but due to the cost of producing and installing them, it was decided to just leave them in service, presumably until they needed replacing. However, due to the robust nature and virtual indestructibility of British post boxes, there are still currently 171 of them 
Merrin Edward VIII's Royal Cipher up and down the UK, making them a rare and unique piece of British street furniture, and one of the last physical remnants of one of the shortest but most controversial reigns in the history of the British monarchy. Anyway folks, I'm now going to head back to the old jalopy and wrap this one up I think. Well folks, sadly that brings us to the end of today's little adventure here in Blackpool and this is the part of the video where Mr H has to say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed today's video taking a look at an Uber Roo, Edward VIII post box and some of the curious and at times controversial history behind them. Certainly one of the shortest reigns in the history of the British monarchy. Anyway folks, I'm going to head off now, I'm going to head off back to Wigan to edit up this video ready for your edification. But if ever you find yourself on West Drive in the Stanley Park area of Blackpool, be sure to check out that post box because they are super rare. So, until the next time, from myself Mr H it is, bye bye for now.